Good morning, Trace. Good morning, Jody. Yes, Trace Haggerty. Uh, the the mystery in my life is, I hear a little New York in your voice, so we've got to know somewhere along the line how you hopped from New York, right? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, no less. How yeah. you got? What train you got on to get to the cornfields? Well, I went through different places <laughs> before I, I actually came uh -huh. to Adrian. What, my, what did your father do? Tree? My father was a salesman, uh -huh. and he sold um, sh glass shower doors and bathroom fixtures. And he, d his territory was Brooklyn, uh, Long Island, and Staten Island. And he knew every developer uh, in the wow. area and when he retired, it took four men to take over his accounts. <laughs> the only problem with uh, his job was he worked solely on commissions, so he didn't oh, have yeah. uh, a salary. Or during retirement. Mm -hmm. Or retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, during the war, his uh, uh, company closed down. So he went to work for Bethlehem Steel mm -hmm. in the office. And he didn't like working in the office because he didn't. was out all driving mm -hmm. all the time to these different areas. And sometimes he'd take us with him to Staten Island. We'd take our lunch if we had a free day. Lovely. So that was a lot uh -huh. of fun. We got to go on the ferry from uh, Brooklyn over to Staten Island. What was his name, Trees? My father's name was Hugh Alphonsus. And what about your mother? My mother's name was uh, Therese Ann uh, Fay when she, ma uh, she married my father. Was she also called Trays? No, she was called Teddy. Oh. It was a nickname. Uh -huh. Well, how did you come about with the name Trays? Well, before um, I was born, I had two little brothers, James, who lived only one day, and Edward, who lived two days. James was born in 1924, and Edward was born in 1929, and I was born in 1930. I was just in New York, and I had the uh, pleasure of visiting their graves. They are oh, bare. just now. You just mean. now, oh. uh, I was on a trip, oh, how and touching. my uh, my grandfather and my grandmother Haggerty are buried in that uh, same, same cemetery plot. in the same plot. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got the name Trays from oh because um, my two little brothers died. My mother prayed to, to Saint Teresa the Little Flower, oh. and told her. If I lived, she would name me after her. So when I went to the first grade, uh, my, um, my mother came with me and she said to the teacher, her name is Therese, she's to be called Therese. And when she learns to write her name, she's uh, learned to put uh, the accent marks over the E's. Lovely. Uh, there probably are many of our sisters like me that attempt to call you Therese, because it's spelled that way. <laughs> it is, but yeah. I always put the accent marks on when I sign my name. Yeah, beautiful. I'm kind of fussy about yes, that. Yes. So um, where did you go to grade school and high school? I went to school in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I, I, the name of my grade school was St. Thomas Aquinas. Oh my heavens. And. Uh, of course, I was baptized in St. Vincent Ferrer, so uh, I was... Uh, Good Dominican beginnings. <laughs> it was, it was. And um, I graduated from St. Jean Baptist in New York City. And the, what, what order of sisters were teaching you? In the, in the grade school, I had the Sisters of Mercy, and in the high school, I had uh, the Congregation of Notre Dame from Montreal. Well, there's a little gap here then, from your high school till the time um, time you uh, became a religious. What, what is the gap there? Well, I told my mother had died in 1946, and so uh, 
My father had remarried and two years later, and there were three little girls from that marriage. Our, his first marriage to my mother, we had three also. I'm the oldest, and we had my brother, and then my sister Helen. Uh, now, <coughs> excuse me. After uh, I graduated from high school, I told my father I wanted to be a sister. And he said, well, I'll ask you one thing. I, I really don't want you to go after graduating from high school. If you work a year and after the year, if you feel like you want to uh, still become a sister, then you can go with my blessing. Which and you happened. did just that. I did, mm -hmm. I did. And I worked for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company in New York City for a year. And it was a wonderful experience, and I met wonderful f friends who were my lifelong friends. My, my. I still see their logo, Metropolitan Life. Life. <laughs> so one year, and then uh, what community were you drawn to? Because you'd had Well, two. several. Okay. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we both wanted to be sisters. Mm -hmm. So uh, she wanted to go to the foreign missions. So she entered the Marist missionaries. Uh, I didn't feel called to the foreign missions. So I, I didn't know where uh, I wanted to go. So I, I kind of like searched around to see. And I, I found that I was attracted to the Good Shepherd sisters because of the ministry. I did not want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Mistake. <laughs> I've always, I've been a teacher. <laughs> so the Good Shepherds, and where were they located? Well, at the time, they were in, uh, they were all over the country. But the particular one that I was interested in was in Wheeling, West Virginia, because uh, when I made a retreat the weekend of July uh, 1949, I wanted to, uh, the priest who gave the retreat said that he, there was a place in West Virginia that needed sisters really bad. So I applied there. And, and, was, and was accepted. What name were you given by the community? I was given, I, was, I had a choice and I choose the name Michael because my great grandfather Haggerty, his name was Michael. So You were uh, called Sister Michael? Sister Mary of St. Michael. That was the traditionally, mm -hmm. the traditional way mm -hmm. that we addressed each other. The whole thing. Would it be proper for me to assume that that was like a, a cloister environment? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. And you lived as a group. We lived in in one convent. Uh, uh, and I had a superior there. We had a superior and a general council, and that's all we were responsible mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Things changed as time went on. Yes. Mm -hmm. The congregation joined the Federation of the Sisters. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we uh, kind of took up the cause, yes. too. Mm -hmm. What were some of, uh, were you mission outside of Wheeling, no. Virginia? No, you, I yeah. always, uh, uh, until 1968, I lived in Wheeling and I, was, I ministered in Wheeling. Mm -hmm. I taught uh, special ed first, and then I taught grades one uh, through 12. And what happened in 68? In 68, you know, we all had the, the call to renewal. From Vatican II. <coughs> From yeah. Vatican II. So where, where were you uh, stationed at the time or missioned at the time of renewal? Well, I was still in Wheeling, but in the summer mm -hmm. of 1968, the, the uh, congregation decided to go for renewal, and we went to Aquinas College in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And Twelve of us went, and it was a wonderful experience, but it kind of changed my life, because when I got home, there was a request from the prioress of the Grand Rapids Dominicans uh, for a sister to teach senior English in St. Francis High School in Traverse City. And so uh, three of us were qualified to take, uh, uh, to position. teach uh, the senior English, so, and I was one of them. So we didn't even know where Travis City was. We took out a map and we said, 
Oh, way up there, we'll freeze to death. So I said, no, that's not for me, and so did the others. But the mo more I thought about it that night, uh, I could not sleep. And I said, to, uh, I guess I should give it a try. So I did. I went to Traverse City for the school year, 68 to 69. Did you ever find out that that was one of our beginning group of no. sisters? Oh, uh, yes, I did when yeah. I went up there. Yes. They called it the cradle. Oh. Uh, so uh, the, sis the Grand Rapids sisters mm -hmm. called it the cradle. The cradle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, did you meet any Adrian Dominicans along the line? In the summer of 68, I met Sister Arthur Meese Casanova. Was that in Grand Rapids? That was in Grand meeting? Rapids. She was at the program, oh yes. Oh, my. Oh, my. Did you ever bump into her again? I did. Once, uh, uh, when, after the experience in Grand Rapids, uh, we decided we should do something about renewal, and we should inquire and find out what we have to do. So we made... Three of us, uh, the superior, the former superior, and myself, we made a quick trip to New Jersey to see Father Cash in New House, and then we went down to uh, uh, see Father Don, uh, I can't think of his last name, uh, in Toledo. He was a canon lawyer. Weir? Yes, Weir, yes. Yeah. That's his name. And then uh, we went. Uh, we said, well, let, we know the Adrian sisters, you know, from our missions in Florida, so let's take a trip up there and see. Maybe the whole congregation should merge with Adrian. So we uh, rang the bell unannounced on a Sunday afternoon, and we were let in by Sister Arthemis. Oh well, that was Again. a sign. Yes, <laughs> yes, that was a sign. Yeah. And then she took us up to the second floor or the third floor, I don't remember which one, a third floor it was, where the, uh, they had a, uh, a community living up there, and Mary Therese uh, McCarthy uh, was a counselor at that time, and so she visited with us. But when we left there, we said, no, that's not an option mm -hmm. for us. So we went back to yes. Wheeling. And how, how did you, uh, the communities, Mission you to Florida, correct? Yes, after after uh, not our community, but your original community. Yes, yes. Um, I, after I finished my stint in uh, uh, Traverse City, uh, I did this, I did the senior English, sixty eight to sixty nine, and then the superintendent asked me if I'd do uh, be the guidance counselor for the high school, and I said, well, I I'm not credited in guidance and counseling. He said, but you've done it. I said, oh yeah, I've done it. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'll teach you all the uh, Mickey Mouse stuff. So <laughs> he did. And uh, I was the guidance counselor from uh, 69 to 70. And at, in, at the end of the school year in 1970, my superior asked me to go to West Palm Beach to uh, be at, to work at the maternity home that the di Archdiocese of Miami was sponsoring through Catholic Charities, so that's where I went. And was that for the young women who are having babies, or yes, that was a maternity home. Yeah, and especially uh, pregnant young pre pregnant young girls. Pre mm -hmm. Pregnant girls in mm -hmm. the 70s, mm -hmm. the. Uh, the way to go was to a maternity home and then give the child up for adoption, oh which most of them did. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, changed over the years. So I, I take it you were the administrator? No, I was, I, I was the assistant administrator. Mm -hmm. But you must have gotten, if it was in West Palm, you must have seen our sisters along the way. Well, yes, our sisters taught uh, the girls. Uh, what, what do you mean? They would come from... Oh. They, they would come from different places, mostly from the north. Hardly any came from uh, Florida. Uh -huh. um, they came from the north, and they stayed until they delivered their babies. In the meantime, most of them were school age, high school. So we had uh, the sisters from uh, Cardinal Newman, the Adrian Dominicans, oh. come and teach them. Do you remember who some of those sisters yes, were? Yes, uh, Sister Ruth James taught oh. the history. And um, 
Then we had a Sister Mary Riley and uh, a Sister Mary Doherty. And uh, eventually, didn't you meet Mary Doherty's sister? Oh, yes. Yeah. In, in a year uh, after I was there in 1971, Mary Doherty came knocking at my door mm -hmm. and she wanted, an, she said her sister, Sister Eleanor, was uh, uh, finishing, uh, closing up St. Uh, Paul's in Owasso and she wanted uh, to come to Florida to study occupational therapy and to work. So I arranged her schedule. I said, sure, she could come here. And I arranged her schedule so that she could go to school and also work. So she lived right there with she you? She lived right oh, there with her sisters, yes. yes. Did anyone else ever do that? Yes. Of our sisters? Oh, yes. After I finished in West Palm Beach, I was there for three years, and I went to Miami. And uh, I was, then I was the administrator of a preg pregnancy program in, at St. Vincent Hall. And uh, as time mm -hmm. went on, I got to know more Adrian sisters. And uh, I hired uh, Sister Marlene Kuhnline mm -hmm. and Sister Betty uh, Meredith and uh, oh Kathy Kenny worked in the summertime uh, for me, so I kind of put them through school. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably knew more Adrian Dominicans than Adrian Dominicans knew Adrian Dominicans. I, I feel that way sometimes, <laughs> yes, uh, that, that I And you did. were on the Sisters Council, too, weren't I was you? on the Sisters Council mm -hmm. for a while, and we went, uh, we drove down Sister Mary Nugent, Sister Carolyn Royal, um, and I drove back and forth uh, to the meetings in Miami. Mm -hmm. So that was another opening. So when did you make the leap to become an Adrian Dominican sister? Well, sister? it wasn't until uh, I had gone to a sabbatical to study formation for my congregation. And during the program, uh, uh, my superior said, you know, uh, Things had changed a bit in the congregation, and I would I went to the program to study formation, as I said, and I said to my superior, I really can't do this because I don't agree with some of the things that had changed. Mm -hmm. So she said, that's okay, Trace, you just go through the program, and whatever you decide at the end, no strings attached. Wow. But I didn't know what I what I was going to mm -hmm. do, so that was my prayer. What am I supposed to do? And so for nine months you were saying, "What am I supposed to, to do?" do. <laughs> yeah, and finally my spiritual director said to me, "You know, Therese, I think you should think about transfer." I said, "Why would I do that? I don't want to transfer." And he said, "I think you should think about it." So I thought about it and I prayed about it, and that was the answer. So when I came home, mm -hmm. I had to tell my decision. Oh boy. And no one believed me. No one believed me till the very end when I made my profession. Because I was in good standing and yes. you know there was no different. Yeah, Everybody bet. was surprised. I bet. I bet. Maybe the Adrian Dominicans were surprised too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so to whom did you go and ask what, what's the process? Oh, and so I had to I had to make a connection. I knew Sister Catherine McKillop, and I knew uh, Sister Grace Doherty uh, from uh, the... Uh, Sisters Council? Uh, no, the LCWR, because oh. at that time we had a Florida LCWR. So uh, that's how I knew them. So I wrote to Catherine, and she forwarded my letter to Barbara Savenka, and... Uh, that the rest was, is history. That was, that's right. <laughs> Did uh, you go through a transfer process? Yes, yes. I never was without vows. Uh, my, when you go through the transfer process at that time, y you had to write uh, a letter to the a prioress of uh, the congregation Warner. you were going. Mm -hmm. No, you had to write to the one mm -hmm. that you were going to and ask if she would accept you. And Carol Johannes at that time was a prioress and she said she would accept me. Then I had to ask 
uh, my own superior, uh, you know, will you let me transfer? And then I had to write a letter requesting transfer from the Holy See. So the three letters went to Rome, and that's and then we received an indult of transfer. But now, always kept that's that's why you were able to keep your vows. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, that's wonderful. And where did you spend your years of, of, d during that transition? Well, in the meantime, uh, my while I was away, uh, Sister Joan Marconi, another person I hired, as well as Sister Benita Bourne, uh, oh my so uh, she was watching over my father. So when I came home and found out I had to spend a year in Adrian, uh, I was a little perplexed about it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, what happened was my father got sick, and he died in uh, 79, December 10th, 1979. And so that was uh, a given. A uh, given. So, mm -hmm. uh, But I was asked to remain in Florida because of that. And so uh, they didn't want me to be, have too many moves. Jeez. So I stayed in Florida from uh, the time I was received, which was in March 1980, I appeared before the transfer board, and I remained uh, uh, in Florida, at, and I lived at the old Casa, oh. and, and worked at St. Mary's Hospital as a chaplain. Because after I finished my program, I was recruited uh, at, by St. Mary's Hospital to work at, as the chaplain in the uh, uh, perinatal unit, the labor delivery Beautiful. and mm -hmm. the NICU unit, mm -hmm. because of my experience with the pregnant okay. women, the girls. So you just picked that job up again? I guess. I, wow. I picked that job up. Uh, at, after I finished my program, I was qualified to be a, a chaplain. And so at that time, Sister Cyrilla Zurich was in charge of issuing uh, uh, certificates of uh, chaplaincy for the National Association of Catholic Chaplains. Was, wasn't she in Adrian as a chaplain also, Cyrilla? Uh, I don't know what she was doing yeah. at the time, mm -hmm. but she, uh, with, with my uh, uh, director of pastoral care at St. Mary's, Father Ray Huber, they worked it out that I was certified as a chaplain. So I remained there until 1982 when I came up to Adrian for my year of uh, being, in, being in, in Adrian. And then in 1983, I professed my vows as an Adrian Dominican. All I did was change the names and the place. <laughs> Well, that was beautiful, just beautiful. And you felt right at home, apparently. Yes, because I knew so many people. Mm -hmm. And then, did you stay in Adrian for a while? No. Or did they, were you missioned someplace else? After I made my profession in 83, um, the hospital had paid my insurance all the time I was up here. At so St. Mary's. I, at mm -hmm. St. Mary's, yes. Mm -hmm. So I felt obligated, you know, to go back. So I went back there for four more years. Wonderful. And then at some some point, you came to Adrian to to uh, to work on the campus or to minister to sisters. Yes. Um, at the time, it, it was 1986, and people were uh, uh, in the mother house preparing for an election of their chapter prioress, and so. Uh, my name was raised. Because you had been because here for I, a year. <laughs> that's right, and everybody knew me. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, also Marcella Hess. Of course, I knew Marcella would be elected, mm -hmm. you know, and she was. Mm -hmm. And then when I went back to, a, a, to uh, West Palm Beach, uh, I got a call uh, to come up, you know, as from her. Marcella? As, from Marcella oh. to be her assistant. Well, lucky because. You. We had to, uh, you know, give a give a talk oh. before uh, the election. So um, people knew you. People remembered me, mm -hmm. yes. And then some other people got to know me. So. Sure. Well, what what a wonderful time. So you were with her. I think her her uh, Marcella was 
uh, priorities for th chapter priorities for three years. That's wasn't right. She? Yeah, she said she yeah. wasn't going doing it anymore. Well, surely uh, the general counsel tapped you on the shoulder for something with all your amazing background and experience, Trace. Well, I decided, you know, it would be better for me uh, as as her assistant um, to run the election for the next chapter priors. Oh, yes. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't want to be chapter mm -hmm. priors. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Uh, but w then did you uh, attach yourself to any other ministry on campus? No, I went back to Florida. <laughs> Florida, here I come. Um <laughs> uh, uh, no, excuse me. In 1987 uh, is when I got the call okay. to come up. And then when I came up, I stayed up mm -hmm. uh, for... Th the 90s. To 90. And mm -hmm. then Ruth Steiner mm -hmm. was leaving transportation. And so uh, I thought, well, maybe I'll take that mm -hmm. over. So I asked her, I said, Ruth, you, I knew her by mm -hmm. then. I said, do you think I should, uh, I could do the job? She said, sure you could. So. Mm -hmm. I took over transportation for seven years. Well, God and bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> kind of organized the whole thing. You really thing. got to know more sisters oh, that yes. way too, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah. So Marie Eugene slash, uh, uh, <laughs> Ruth. Ruth Steiner uh, made a, a wonderful choice in, in asking you to take her place. So. I know your ministry didn't end there. No, from transportation, um, I went, uh, I, it was very difficult, you know, because we had no cell phones, mm -hmm. we had uh, uh, Not, uh, nothing to keep connected. So oh. anyway, <laughs> when I decided I, I would change positions, mm -hmm. I thought, I need to get a little rest here. So. Um, I asked for um, the sabbatical, mm -hmm. which I went to uh, uh, Water Mill. I thought I should get some more Dominican. Uh, oh, wonderful. So I went, uh, some more Dominican education, mm -hmm. so I, I chose Water Mill as my... Uh, uh, was that in New York? The, uh, Water Mill mm -hmm. was on Long Island. It Long was run by the Amityvilles, and mm -hmm. so there were seven of us in the program and we called ourselves the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> so, As a movie once said. Yes, yes. So yeah. we had a wonderful year, a hundred, a hundred days. It was a hundred day program. And then the second part of my sabbatical was at Genesis Farm. And uh, I was very fortunate to have Al Albert Nolan as a participant in that program. So we had a great uh, uh, three months, I think it was. Uh, or a month, I don't remember exactly. And it was, it was a great introduction to me uh, to uh, the agriculture and the farming and all of the, the things that we're composting and things mm -hmm. that we're studying now, yes. And the spirituality of the earth, you know, how we are, we are so connected to everything on, exactly. in this, in this exactly. world. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, Therese, before we, we finish, I know that uh, somewhere along the line you have become and continue to be a spiritual director. Yes. Um, when I came between programs of my sabbatical year, um, I was walking down the hall and Carol Johannes was walking down the hall too. So she said to me, what are you going to do after your sabbatical, mm -hmm. Therese? And I said, I don't know. She says, think about uh, taking the internship mm -hmm. in spiritual direction. So I thought about it and um, I decided maybe that would be, be a good thing. So I, I, did, uh, uh, I did that program the following year. I, I want to thank that priest in Denver that asked you, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about transferring? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know even while you here living on campus, you live in Regina, that you've been, raised our awareness about homeless and the trafficking issue. 
and has been deep in your heart, has it Yes, not? it really has. Yes. It really has. So thank you for that, and thank you for your, your presence among us and for the beautiful gifts that you have so graciously shared with, with all of us. You're very welcome. Yeah. It, it's been a wonderful experience for me. Did I, you ever think you'd end up your living years here in Michigan? Uh, no, not really, no. except when I was in Traverse City, I said to my friend up there, you know, Pat, um, I love Michigan, and I wish that I could live here. In fact, I might even feel, I feel like I might even be buried here. <laughs> This was this was in uh, uh, 68 or nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my! So uh, and full circle. Yeah, I, it's I'm, coming I'm, true. Exactly, exactly. Well, God bless you and blessings on well, your day. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, it's been a pleasure being here and being in a. I love being in Adrian Dominican. Yes. I don't see how I missed the boat. <laughs> well, you you know Saint uh, Thomas Aquinas in the beginning and then. You, uh, your parish was St. Vincent, and then Traverse City. I mean, it was just written in your life, yeah. the, the Dominican charism. I just didn't read very well. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>